Hello guys and welcome to the part 2 video. There is still a lot of work ahead, but today we need to finish building this UPS. So let's do this. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, which is a professional printed circuit board manufacturer with over 14 years of experience in making high quality PCBs at affordable prices. Please visit their website at jlcpcb.com to check what products and services they offer. You just need to upload the Gerber file and order high quality PCBs for your project starting at $2. Let's continue the UPS build. Last time I mounted the constant current constant voltage buck converter to charge the lithium cells. After finishing with the thick wires I can tighten the last screws on the battery holders. I'll mount the relay circuit now. Most of the wires will go under this board. I just need 4 M3 screws to tighten it in position. For the 12 volts input and output I will use these 5.5 mm connectors which are rated at 3 amps. And for the 19 volts I found only this type of connectors. The cutouts for the input and output connectors are made in the back panel near the fan. The 12 volts female connector came with a nut. I just need to tighten it, but it's a bit difficult in this crowded corner. Ok, let's recap what I soldered so far. These are the two inputs, red for 12 volts and blue for 19 volts. First we have the fuses. Then the wires go to the main switch. And when I turn it on, the main LED also lights up. Then the current goes with these two wires, through the diodes and to the outputs. The diodes are soldered on another piece of strip board, which also include the capacitors. These diodes are needed to block the current going back to the chargers when the UPS works on battery. And another set of diodes will block the current going back to the converters when the chargers deliver the power. These diodes will also protect the modules if the relay fails and all the components are powered in the same time. The downside is that there will be a small voltage drop on the outputs. But this shouldn't create any problems, the chargers deliver enough voltage to compensate. These two capacitors are used to keep the output voltage stable, especially when the relay switches between mains and battery. I've soldered some more wires. When the main switch is turned on, the current goes with the red and blue wires into the diodes, then to the capacitors which will smooth out the output voltage, then the wires go under this board and out from here. I need to put some super glue here so we don't accidentally pull this cable out. I want to test the relay, so I will temporarily add the fuse on the 12 volts input. I will use this 12 volts charger and now the relay should activate and disconnect the load from the battery. You can hear the relay clicking, so it's working. The two LEDs will be connected in series with 1 kilo ohm resistors on the 12 volts outputs, green indicating the mains and red working on battery power. I will use this step down converter to decrease the variable battery voltage to a stable 12 volts output for the optical network terminal. Two standoffs are added for better mounting. The negative input and output pins are bridged on the board, so it doesn't matter where you connect them. The positive output of the converter goes to a diode on the 12 volts output. I'll just use some 3mm screws recovered from old CD-ROMs. To mount the cooling fan I will use 4 screws from a PC fan. The fan wires are soldered to the output of that tiny buck converter from the relay board. They will be insulated with heat string tubes. Ok, I soldered all the wires for the battery pack, the step down converter for the 12 volts output, the fan, the LEDs and I added 4 lithium cells to test it. Hey, it works! This is a nice feeling, it's right up there with finding money on the street. And now when I connect the 12 volts plug, the relay will disconnect the load from the battery pack. Ok, 
I need the 12 volts output from the step down converter when working on battery. I will use the potentiometer to set the voltage. This resistor will represent the optical network terminal and will help to set the output voltage with better accuracy, because there will be a small voltage drop under load. The UPS needs some tall rubber pads, because the air must enter easily through the venting holes on the bottom panel. I modified the back edge of the box cover, because the fan is a few millimeters too big. Now it fits perfectly. It's time to install the fuses. 2 amps for the battery pack. 1.5 amps for the 19 volts input. And 0.5 amps for the 12 volts input. But if you have bigger loads, of course you need higher current fuses. We need some heat sinks, to be sure everything remains cold. I will stick them to the integrated circuit using thermal glue. I'll leave the UPS in this position for about 30 minutes, for the glue to dry. I want to add a heatsink on the relay too. This may look silly, but remember that the relay will always be activated, except for power outages, and in time it will get hot. The heatsink will help to dissipate the heat faster. To increase the battery voltage to 19 volts for the ASUS router, I will use this powerful step-up converter. It's rated at maximum 150 watts, but it needs to deliver only 10.5 watts, so it should remain perfectly cold. It also has big heat sinks, and the cooling fan will be turned on when working on battery power. I installed it on the top panel because it's the only available space. You may have noticed that I use components rated at much higher currents that they will be used for. This is to be sure that they will handle the workload easily without getting hot. I could have gone with cheaper and smaller components, but they would have definitely got hot and we don't want that in a UPS with lithium cells. But I will not connect the output wire yet, can you guess why? No, you're wrong, it's because this boost converter can increase the voltage to 35 volts and I don't know the actual position of the potentiometer. If the output is higher than 25 volts, it will blow my precious capacitor, which I bought with the help of my patrons. I want to thank all my patrons for supporting my channel. If you want to become a patron, you can click up here or in the video description and you will have access to video updates and more DIY videos exclusively for my patrons. I want to mark the positive and negative terminals so in the future when changing the lithium cells nobody will be confused. And now comes this beautiful part, I will insert all the lithium cells. It feels like charging a weapon. I mean no weapon, it feels like making a sandwich, a healthy sandwich. Now we can check the boost converter voltage. Hey look, almost 27 volts, I could have said bye bye to the capacitor. That would definitely have made someone very happy. I will temporarily set the voltage under 20 volts. It's safe to connect the positive output wire now. I can finally set the boost converter voltage to 19 volts using the ceramic resistor as a load for a better accuracy. We need some connectors for the output cables. For the 12 volts output I got this 5.5 mm plug lead. The positive and negative wires must be soldered in different positions along the cable in order to avoid the possible short circuit if the insulation isn't good enough. The 19 volts connector is of lower quality, but it's the only one I found. At this point I thought that the UPS is finished and I started testing it, but there is a problem. The buck converter that charges the battery pack is getting very hot and it doesn't deliver power anymore. I don't know what happened, maybe I shorted something by mistake with a loose wire. In layman's terms it's f***ed, I will use this one instead. Let's talk about the charging process of this BMS board. When the lithium cells are charged, the voltage of each cell is increasing until it reaches the balance voltage, which for this BMS board is 4.2 volts, plus or minus 0.03 volts. Then the balance resistor will be activated for that lithium cell and it will use 100 milliamps from the charging current. The charging process will continue for that cell, but very slowly. So the other cells will also get to 4.2 volts. 
then all the cells will continue to be charged very slowly until the first one gets to 4.25 volts, which is the overcharge protection voltage. Then the charging process is completed and there is no more current going to the battery pack. But lithium ion cells have a self discharge rate which in time will decrease the battery voltage very slowly. When the first cell gets to 4.15 volts, which is the overcharge recovery voltage, the charging process is resumed. For new lithium ion cells, this should happen very rarely, probably once or twice a month. But let's talk about the worst case scenario for the overcharge protection voltage. If all the cells are perfectly balanced and the cutoff voltage works at 4.3 volts, that means we need a charging voltage higher than 17.2 volts. Otherwise, the charging process will be stuck in the balance sequence because none of the lithium cells can reach the overcharge cutoff voltage. And the balancing resistors will be continuously hot, and obviously we don't want that. To avoid this, I will set the charging voltage to 17.25 volts. A higher voltage will charge the battery faster, but it will damage the 4S battery indicator. I also need to limit the charging current. This time I will set it to maximum 800 milliamps. You can see the converter entering constant current mode when the battery is discharged and tries to draw more current. It's easier to glue the heatsink before installing it in the UPS. Another important thing I want to talk about is that all the components have a common negative input and output. For example, the BMS board has the same terminal for the negative input and output. The step-up converter has the negative input and output terminals bridged on the board. So, all the components have a common negative input and output, except this one. This step-down converter has a current limiting feature, so it needs to read the current. It does that using this current sensing resistor, which in this case is R050. It's connected between the negative input and the negative output. It measures the voltage drop on this resistor to know how much current is passing through. So, where do we connect all the components? Here or here? Well, the negative output of the converter goes to the BMS board because it needs to measure how much current is going to the battery. The negative input is connected with all the other components that have a common negative. The new converter is a bit bigger than the broken one, so I need to be careful not to touch anything around it. I placed it on the side panel with sticky foam tape, and the 12 volts converter is screwed back in position above it. Let's test the charging process. The multimeter is measuring the battery pack voltage. The charging current is decreasing, the first cell gets to 4.25 volts, and the charging process will stop right about now. I knew exactly when the charging will stop because I edited the video. The charging voltage is 17.25 volts and the battery pack voltage is 16.93 volts. So the charging process is completely stopped now. The 19 milliamps current you see here is used by the charging converter and the battery indicator LEDs. There is no more current going to the battery. And finally the UPS is finished. It took so long to build it that the orange kitten has grown into an adult during this project. Is it just me or this one also looks like a bomb, similar to my fast charging power bank? And now let's test it. My variable power supply will represent the 19 volts adapter and this is the 12 volts adapter. First I will turn on just the main button and check the outputs. The relay is using very little current and it seems like it's not showing up on this type of ammeter. Now I will add a load to the 12 volts output. It's using power only from the charger. And now the 19 volts output. Again, only from the charger. I will turn on the battery now. 
You can see it's using current from the 19 volts adapter to charge the battery. Let's connect the load to the 12 volts output. It's still using power from the charger and the 19 volts output. The current consumption from the 19 volts adapter is increased now. It's using current to charge the batteries and power the router. And now let's simulate the power outage. There is no more current drop from the 19 volts adapter. Only the UPS is powering the ONT and the router now. The problem is that this dummy load resistor is getting pretty hot. And when the mains power returns, everything is back to normal. And now let's measure some temperatures with my DIY thermometer. The batteries are cold. The relay is cold. The charging IC is warm, but it's fine. And the BMS is a little warm. I tested it for another two days and it works fine. But I must warn you, if you build something like this, you need to be very careful. I burned three modules during this build. You cannot leave it unattended until you have tested it thoroughly and you are 100% sure that it's safe. In the worst case scenario, it may catch fire from just a simple mistake, for example shorting the battery. You are responsible for your build. So, I hope you enjoyed this UPS video. If you did, don't forget to check out my Patreon page, hit the like button, share, subscribe and I will see you soon. Bye!